All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG, and it's time for another Dev's deck. Tonight, Dev brings us a budget deck. Of course, he's bringing budget all week this week. But it's a Caps deck, and that stands for Cogwork Assembler. What was the other part? Power Stone Shard? Cogwork Assembler Power Stone Shard Combo. Wow. What a... All right. Um, at least we're dealing with two cards, huh? huh? We'll talk about it. All right, guys. Um, my name's Eric. You're watching Sideboard MTG here on YouTube Gaming. I hope you like tonight's show. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel. We'd be happy to have you as part of the community. And uh, let's... Uh, is, that, is the music low enough here? I think it is. Anyway, let's, let's actually take a look at this Power Stone Shard combo. Um, Alright, so the idea here is... Let, let, let me pull this up so you guys can... Well, where's my, where's my display? Where's my panel? Bam. There we go. Alright. So, Cogwork Assembler requires 7 mana. You create a token that's a copy of target artifact. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, all right, that's um, <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Seven mana to create a copy of a um, of a cool artifact. All right, I mean like God Pharaoh's gift or something like that. Make a bunch of those, bring a bunch of creatures back. Like that would be cool. But how we're we gonna get that kind of mana? Well, Power Stone Shard says that. I mean, it's a three-mana artifact, which is great with some of our other cards. It says that you get one colorless mana for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. Oh, hey, check it out. Um, the missing cards uh, for our deck. Mana Traders dropping those off for us. Now, this was only a $25 deck. I actually had most of the pieces, but, um, you know... Mana Traders is definitely, uh, like, you You may not have, have all those pieces, so, like, if you don't, then you may not want to buy the deck. You may want to rent it, try it out first. You may want to add other cards to it. You may want to try many different builds. Dev talked about adding, like, Walking Ballistas to it. Uh, Sephiroth Olive just played a version, uh, or just um, came out with a version of this deck today as well. So uh, that that's kind of uh, cool. I mean, he came out with it uh, about uh, four hours ago. I did get a chance to see that, and um, I think that deck actually just looks better. But Dev was on a twenty-five dollar budget. I thought it would be funny to you know make all the lands foil, uh, you know, full art. So like the land base would technically be worth more than the whole deck. I thought it would be funny. Um, anyway, why not, right? <clears throat> So, if you want to play this deck, or any other deck for that matter, you want to beef it up, you want to do other things, you can always go to Mana Traders. They've got you covered. It's a rental service, and you can play it, pay a flat rate, rent all the cards in Magic, play the, all the decks in Magic for less, less than, for the entire block of Dominaria, uh, you could... Um, you, you could get that for less than a place at a Karns online or in paper, right? Like, just keep playing. Um, play all the decks. Have all the Karns. Play four Karns in every deck. Try it in every deck. Like, you can do all that. Mana Traders. If you do decide to sign up, check the description box, and um, you'll... Um, You'll find a coupon code there, sideboard MTG15, and that will it'll save you 15% on your first three months. Um, this deck has just got me baffled. All right, so the way this works is you have your Cogwork Assembler. You pay the seven mana to make a copy of Power Stone Shard. You need four copies of Power Stone Shard before you actually have the mana to start making this work. So you gotta also do uh, your sequencing in order. So I'm expecting that I'm gonna mess this up at some point. I watched the videos a couple times. I, you know, I, I know the explanation. You, you gotta have four of them. You you tap one, you make that mana, then you tap like another one. It, we make the mana, then we make a copy, and we make a mana, and we make a copy. It's going to require math, which oh man, math. I know some of you guys get onto me for math, but 
that is kind of the entire idea of this deck. Now we've got a lot of ways to draw cards. We've got some things to do once we have infinite mana and infinite copies of any artifact. We have, uh, you know, scry so that we can dig down through the deck. You know, we're looking for combo pieces. Blink of an eye, just a good way to, you know, protect combo pieces or to remove, you know, problematic creatures. Maybe even time walk someone if, you know, if they spent their entire turn five casting something like the Scarab God. Um, Blink of the Eye is just great right there. Glen S. Crane, uh, another way to dig up our combo pieces. Trophy Mage will get either side of the combo pieces. Metallic Rebuke, a way to protect us trying to get down our combo pieces. Whirl of Invention, um, this is just another way to go get combo pieces. So, like, the deck is all about I am setting up, live or die, we're going die hard combo. Uh, some of you may be asking me why there's not other cards in the deck. Um, you know, you were asking about Sephron Olive's version of the deck. I did pull up Seph's version of the deck. I, um, I like some of the things that he's got going on here. He's got his protection in the way of we're just going to wipe the board because we're only going to play the one Cogwork Assembler when it comes time for that. Seth also has uh, Walking Ballista in the deck. Now, no World of Inventions here, but he's got Walking Ballista, so that's something else he can do when he has a ton of mana. Maybe they remove the uh, Cogwork Assembler, but you do still have ways to produce extra, you know, Power Stone Shards, whether it's uh, in your Mirage Mirrors or something. You can still, like, pump into this walking ballista a ton especially with cards like paradox engine i really think that paradox engine should have been in uh dev's version of the deck but uh, we're gonna play it anyway we're gonna find out you know if we can get this thing to go off i hope we can i'm um i'm a little bit worried i'm, I'm gonna admit that i am entering this one very skeptical um, there's uh, a couple one of cards that we can also do, you know, some nice things when we start, you know, playing and copying and things. My biggest worry and my biggest skepticism about this deck is I'm playing Magic Online. So I've got to resolve all of these triggers and I'm worried about beating the clock. Even if we get this to go off, it's going to be a lot of triggers, guys. So once we do get it to, to going off, Bear with me on, you know, completely ignoring chat and just trying to not die to the clock, okay? Um, let's look at the sideboard here. And uh, Sentinel Totem is just, it's a great card. One mana, just going to, you know, give us the ability to, to dump the graveyards. We don't really need the graveyards. Universal Solvent, when we're, the plan is to make seven mana anyway. Uh, when you have Universal Solvent, you can uh, make infinite copies of this and start uh, destroying target permanents just blowing everything up um, that is an option and then uh, another copy of blink of an eye dramatic reversal this is a card i haven't really played with but untap all non-land permanents you control i didn't even know this was like a card and um, this card's actually really interesting untap all non-land permanents you control wow why why haven't i seen this this card's great what what anyway negate um this is like a blue combat trick um simic merfolk well, like what two mana instant speed untap all non-land permanents yeah swing and i'm dead on the back swing except seems mean um yeah Three copies of Negate because, like, um, you're running blue. You you need to be running Negate. If you're running blue, you need to be running Negate. It's one of the best ways to stop Teferi. Flat out. Another great way to stop Teferi is to call it with Sorcerer's Spyglass. We talked about this in Coffee Time today. Um, I actually went back and listened to that Coffee Time. I thought that it was, uh, it was fairly decent, so I went ahead and made that public. So if you guys do want uh, to catch an episode of Coffee Time, there is an episode today. The, uh, the entire conversation was basically just going over um, Louisville, uh, the tournament results in Louisville, and talking about what cards you needed to have in your deck to be able to beat that. So uh, we were just um, some guys talking about how do you beat the meta right now. How, more of the conversation was about how to beat blue-white control. Everything kept coming back to how to beat blue-white control. 
and um, we talked about that a lot. And counter spells, sorcerer spyglass, these are all great ways to do that. River's rebuke is not a bad way because, especially here where most of their removal is going to be enchantment um, based removal, if it comes time for us to go off we just rivers rebuke get all of the things that they've hidden away under enchantments back assuming we can get the rivers rebuke to be cast but uh, we can wait as long as we need to in most of those decks it, as long as we can like bounce it to fairy or, or something like that and keep it from going uh, going in, uh, infinite or ultimate yeah uh, wow River's Rebuke, just a cool card, though. So let's get back over to chat. We'll get some shout-outs, and then uh, we'll get into a game, right? Let's, like, ah, oh, Dev says you can do this on turn six. I, man, I hope it works. Oh, my goodness, I hope this thing works. Um, but, oh, man, like, it just seems really weird. Even Seth's version of it, it seems like, man, this is, I've played some serious jank trying to get things to happen. Uh, you know, going infinite with Tishar and things like that requires quite a few parts. This may be easier than that. This may be so consistent, it's ridiculous. Everything in the deck is built to get these parts, so maybe it may it may just work. I'm just worried about them killing my Cogwork Assembler. Like, if he's gone, what do we do then? Um, Agent856, what's up? Paul Patterson, how you doing? Um, you know, I've never really played a Sephiron Olive deck, uh, not like his exact 75, I don't think, um, on stream. I, I don't know. I mean, he's a streamer. Maybe he would, I don't know. I don't know. I, I try to, other than Jim Davis, like I, like Jim Davis and Dev are the only two people that I play their decks. Um, I, Jim Davis is like one of my favorite, uh, pro magic players right now. And, um, like, it, I just, I, so I like playing his decks. I like hearing his ideas. I like, um, when you play their, their deck, that you get a, an inside feel of how they, how they perceive, you know, the way to attack the meta. And what I think about Jim Davis is he keeps his converted mana cost, like, to the bare minimum. Like, he will prize or, 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 like, put value on low converted mana cost, especially in the sideboard. So many of his decks look like modern decks because they're just really, really cheap converted mana costs. Like spells, um, you know, Jace's defeats and, and spell um, spell pierces and things like that. Just great cards. And it gives you that insight. But anyway, so I've never really played uh, a Sephiron Olive deck. So maybe we'll play uh, maybe we'll play a version of his Power Stone if, uh, if he doesn't put one out. Uh, Sisk Dantes, hello, how you doing? Cult of Tim, Robert, what's up? Hank Knight, um... Let's see, the uh, the Power Stone wasn't Seth's. It was a top eight deck from Wow. I can't I can't say that, but awesome. Uh, some guy in Japan um, nailed it. What's up? Uh, let's see here. Zelfi Zelfa Zelfa Zelfi Zelfa Zelfa. How you doing, bud? Uh, the first time you saw this deck was from a Chinese or Japanese channel. Okay. Cool. So this this deck has been around. Like there's people like trying this deck. Um, Rush, what's up, Rush? Agent MLP. Man, we got a bunch of agents in here. Like what what's going on? Um, <laughs> uh, what, who is a uh, Mag Magorian Axe? What's up, dude? How you doing? Hefe, what's up, Hefe? Silent Watcher. I'm sure I missed somebody in there for the horde. Ah, oh, it's a great way to stop it. What? Hello, guys. You know, I might have missed some people. I'll try to get. I'll try to get you guys, but I want to get into some games, right? Let's get into some games. Here we go. I mean, you're gonna be taking this to an F and M, right? Like, so we 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 gotta see a real game. Like, let's do this. This is what I do for you guys. Just real games. Like, here we go. Oh man. And when I say real game, when when you when you put the the two tickets up for the game, people are less likely to scoop, more like it's a Friday night magic game. Uh, we have double cogwork assembler. That's not horrible, I don't think. At least we have backup version like backup um, copies here and the only thing we have to spin our our trophy mages and all of our other cards on is to 
get power stones. So I'm going to keep it. Um, seems a little weird having no power stone um, in the opening hand, but I think we're going to have like ways to get it. So we're going to we're going to go with it. Bruno Lodi, thank you for subscribing. Um, let's put that on the bottom. I've got enough land for now. We're going to be drawing some cards. Um, I don't want to play this early. It's not like I want to start this 2-3 beat down. Ooh, there we go. Oh, game time. Here we go. Oof. This deck. I'm, I'm curious. I am very curious. Ooh, do I want a Glint Nest Crane here or just Prism? I think I'll Prism. Okay, there's a Mirage Mirror. We can play that next turn. Um, I guess. I mean, we could wait. He's not casting spells. I I don't want to cast anything. I, I just get the feeling that next turn we're going to see Gonti or something like that. Um, Gonti could be a way he could remove one of our four power stones. And I just don't want that, uh, especially since we haven't seen one. Um, we can wait a turn. I, I, think, I think we just wait a turn. We've got a couple of metallic rebukes. He hasn't cast anything yet. If he does decide that he wants to start casting things, then... All right, so next turn we can still like cast things like um like now we can go crane i mean he may just be holding a ton of removal whiffed on the crane and um we're gonna put that on the bottom of these um we'll pass Now, I, I just want to hold up the Metallic Rebukes. Like, I'm, I'm expecting him to do something eventually. Okay, there's a Mending. I don't like Mending. Let's just counter the Mending. So he's trying to combo as well. Alright, well... I mean, we could have played the Mirage Mirror and started, like, this catch-up game, but... Like, with Blink of an Eye next turn. Evening, Walkers. What's up, Cushy? How you doing? Ciao, 83. What's up, buddy? Uh, Power Stone Shard. We got one. We got one. I think I want to um, sacrifice the Renegade map. Go ahead and just pull another land out. Um, it'll shuffle the library again. Maybe that's a bad idea considering I know that there were three lands on the bottom of my deck. And like that's going to put more of a land count into the deck now because like I know that there was that, that stack of land there. Um, um, Well, they're... Like, so this can happen for a while, right? Create... Um, at the beginning of... At the beginning of... Uh, your upkeep, sacrifice another creature if you don't... Okay, I mean... I mean, do we do anything here? I don't think so. I don't... Like, I could almost see bouncing the glint, glint Nest Crane. 
Um, prison looks good. Land, okay. This is turn seven. Uh, we'll leave that on top for sure. Mm, now we can, I, I guess, swing. Right, bounce, bounce. Uh, that's that was the plan was to bounce it and draw a card this turn because like I only had three mana last turn and I'm kind of being a little greedy. Um, especially like right now, I know that next card on top, so. No, I don't want a mirror. Um, I I want to uh, bounce here. Thrashing Brontodon. Let's make him pay for it. I mean, I guess I could just wait and, like, bounce the... I don't know. I mean, we lose this Power Stone Shard if I bounce this. I mean, as soon as I tap out right here, like, I almost want to just bounce my own Power Stone Shard and then just play them. Like, if we just hold this up, we can protect it from, from the from the Thrashing Brontodon. Oh man, this is like this is the play right here, right? Like bounce the demon, let the let the right go away. This way he doesn't get like eight, four more tokens. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play Power Stone Shard. I mean, if he's got uh, blossoming defense, it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit of a pain. But um, yeah, well, I mean that's what we've got. All right, here we go. Here's his demon. Flying trample, all the other good things. Okay. He plays land. All right. Sacrifice two creatures, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, sure. I'm going to go ahead and... Power Stone Shard, or Blink with Kicker. We draw another Power Stone Shard. How far are we away here? It's time to start doing some math.
Uh, okay, so I'm... I'm copying here. We've got a little bit of redundancy. I think we go off next turn. Here we go. Quick question. Mirage Mira can copy enchantments. What would happen if you copied a saga during your upkeep? Uh, it would get a counter on it after you draw. I am about 95% sure. I was thinking about that earlier, and um, I, that's how I think that works. So, I mean, the saga would, um, as this saga enters the battlefield, and after your draw st draw step, it would just have zero on it. Like that's not normal. Like it normally enters with one, so it would just get its first trigger there. Uh, it would get its first counter. Um, the next turn, if you copied a different saga, you could get yet a second lore counter on it, but you would be triggering the second effect. And then if you copied yet a third different saga on your third one, you would actually get that e that ultimate on that saga so um like because they are all war counters and the counter would stay on the mirage mirror so um that's it's about does this work So I'm no longer an artifact or enchantment? Does that fizzle the thrashing brontodon? Yeah. Yeah. Fizzle, baby. Fizzle, whizzle. Ooh, yeah! God, I love knowing how rules work. That was decent. Gotcha. Play Mirage Mira is and good. I like it, sagas. Might like you might be on to something, Hefe. You might be on to something. He's like, I'm bringing it back. All right. What are you popping this time? White chat. My bad. Okay. You got it, opponent. You got that one. You got that one. Oh. Alright, so now he's returning it again. He's going to pop yet another. This is not good, people's not good all right opponent I'm gonna run out cog worker assembler this is probably wrong um, because I know I don't have the mana here. Like, because I have to spin four just to make this happen. What does this do? Target creature from your grave? Alright. Okay. So this would be four. They would each create three. And these last um, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, so we might be able to pull some shenanigans. Shenanigans. 
Right. Um, all right, so these get exiled at the beginning of the next end step. So if we wait and try to make a um, Power Stone Shard in his end step, or at the beginning of his end step, it should be around on our turn, untapped, to, to give us the fourth one. So we may still have a chance at going off here. Um, this does have to survive. All right, there's Demon Lord Belzalock. That's not overly scary. Um, he got a Land of War Elves, so it stopped. Dodge the bullet there, boys. Dodge the bullet there. Um, well, if you have untapped land, you might... Ne right, we, I, we get to go off next turn. I'm about 95% sure of if this Cogworker Assembler lives. Um... The stack needs blue white and it needs uh, wrath. Like so you can flash in these uh, these parts. Um That's that's just not good for us guys. Just not good for us. I mean, running it out into a thrashing Brontodon, like that's right. Is the demon legendary? Oh yeah, that's Demon Lord Belzenlock. He's the one who carries the Black Blade Reforged. We were asking about that one night, and someone said it was Black Blade, but it's it's not. It's Demon Lord Belzenlock. I don't know if this works. I think I need to copy this combo piece so he can't disrupt us. Um, we're gonna have we're gonna have roughly enough mana to do this. I think I'm not 100%, but maybe I need to see how the math goes. Anyway, I mean, is he he might just pop something right now, so. Alright, so he, he poppies one, cop, pops one of the Mirage Mirrors. Um, yeah. Okay. Whirl for three. Um, let's look and see what we can do here. We're looking at... One, two, Mirage, make that... And then we have three plus the five. I'm gonna try to do this. Oh, now I've gotta do everything instant speed. Uh, we tap, we go. So we would have to tap way too many here because they need to um, 
yeah, we're not going to get there. Because we, we can't even do that. So, if we go one, two, three, four, we'll create one. This will mean these will make four each. So we'll go four, five. Create another. This one will make one, two, three, four, five. I think I just fizzled out. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um. Yeah, we've got uh, we got to speed this up. Yeah, we're we're doing this. Okay. He scooped it up. Sweet! I fizzled. I have infinite mana. Right. We did it, yeah. We, we actually did it. We had exactly... Well, we had a little bit extra, honestly. Um, so, yeah. Um, that, that's fine. That, that, that worked. It did eventually work. Um, interesting. Very interesting. I, I think I want Rivers Rebuke. I um, this deck's going to be doing a whole bunch of things, putting a, a lot of cards down. I am worried about um, Thrashing Bronton. Um, I also think that the Sentinel Totem may be pretty decent here. So let's take out the Array and the Artificer's Assistant. I don't think he's going to have Settle, so I'm not wor worried about the Chalice. I'm more worried about Thrashing Brontodon than anything else, so I'm definitely bringing in the Sorcerer's Spyglass. We will be causing, calling uh, Brash. Um, don't call it Brash. It's 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 uh, Thrashing Brontodon, or Brashing Throntodon. You pick. Um, hmm. The Blink of an Eye seems decent. Uh, yeah, uh, Spyglass is definitely, uh, definitely coming in, guys. I just don't know what one card I want to cut. It might be a Blink of an Eye or maybe a River's Rebuke. Um, he's definitely got a lot of Recursion. So maybe we, like, he's got a lot of Enter the Battlefield triggers and things like that. So maybe I just want more Metallic Rebuke? Maybe not. I mean, he did just play around it, right? So maybe this would help us go off with less uh, with less of our cre uh, things, or less of our combo pieces, so we can just kind of bluff the Metallic Rebuke, maybe. Negate's probably better. Um, game 3, I might bring in Negate over the Metallic Rebukes altogether. Um, we can go map, we can go sentinel totem, we can do some, some things. We do have a mirror, like, we've got all of our combo pieces here. Um, we just need more copies of all of our combo pieces. Land off the top wouldn't be bad either. That ain't bad. Next turn, we can play the uh, Sentinel Totem and hold up uh, Metallic Rebuke. So we had two land. I, I was okay with that. There's a Gonti. Land off the top makes it better. It, it does. It makes it a lot better. But um, I, this was a land anyway, so I'm not like overly worried about the the land issue there uh, we're gonna get to three now by the looks of it so um, we put that on the bottom 
go for just a natural draw of a land. Like, next turn, I'm just going to go for playing my pieces and stuff, so. Branch Walker, that's fine. I'm more worried about ca countering, like, um, Brontodon or something like that. I'm going to counter this. I can't let him take one of our, our combo pieces. Yeah, we won game one. I'm, um... I'm, I was impressed that we could actually make it happen. We've got 12 minutes to make it happen again here. Um, so, I'm going to be playing fairly fast. We're going to thin the deck a little bit and then um, play land Prophetic Prism. Draw a card. Okay, so next turn we can... Start going Power Stone, Power Stone, Trophy Mage, Power Stone. We don't need him seeking what we're... <laughs> yeah, I... What? Holding that uh, the real ability of duress, right? Yeah, seeing what like knowing everything like the information is is great, which is another reason Sorcerer Spyglass is so good. Like this deck definitely needs more Sorcerer Spyglass. I mean, if 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 Brontodon is like one of your your biggest worries, then you need more copies of Sorcerer Spyglass. The second one is uh, Teferi. So, uh, will this deck hate Lost Legacy? Lost Legacy can't get an artifact, so the only thing you're going to really get in Lost Legacy is you're going to pull one of their pieces that can get artifact. Um, but there you go for the Horde. For the Horde's got you covered. Uh, let's put some blockers down, right? We'll just go get uh, more Power Stones. Put down some blockers and start trying to go off. So we will grab a power stone. Now I'm just gonna like play power stone, play power stone, and then uh, we'll go for the cog workers assembler. Yeah, we we definitely trade here. Like, just stopping damage is definitely where we want to be. Alright, well. There he is. Lana War Elf. Tapping Lana War Elf. Playing another Lana War Elf. Do we have Fumigate in this deck? No? Oh, man, we need Fumigate in this deck. So we can go. We can go Power Stone pass. Um, if we do that, we're dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so cancel that. We have to play Trophy Mage, and we're probably just gonna be dead anyway. We're definitely gonna use the ability. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to get another Power Stone. Well, we're holding the combo in our hand. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to die by the time we can actually play it. Um, lack of lands. Yeah, lack of lands. I did keep a one lander with a, um, a Renegade map, but um, it's been rough. Um, we're dead, guys. Like, we don't have the mana for a river's rebuke, so we're we're just we're done. Uh, 
Oh, it would have been a land. Yeah. So, Power Stone Shard. We could have played two Power Stone Shards and had two mana open. Um, but, yeah, it just didn't happen. We did not see him, um, like, just be real heavy on um, spells and things. He seems like he just had all of his creatures in his deck right there. Um, Metallic Rebuke. He might want to, like, switch to spells this game. Uh, I'm going to go Metallic Rebuke and over the Blinks. Um, I'm actually going to take out one Sentinel Totem. And bring in the River's Rebuke. Maybe we'll... Maybe we take out both Sentinel Totems. Right, just one Totem. Yeah, well, I, I think... Uh, I think that's where we're where we should be anyway. Like, I think that's a side thing of his. Um, we can keep this. This is this is more land. We got a we got a scry here. Uh, it's not perfect, but I'll take it. We'll put that on top. Um, I mean, it's another scry, and we can play sorcerer spyglass off of it. I'll, I'll keep it. Wait, we could. Can you? Yeah, you can't call a War Elf, so. Um, but do you know what we can call? Oh. That's nice. Yeah, we'll leave that on top. We can call Power Stone. No, can't call Power Stone Shard. We can call that Threshing Brontodon. Bresh. No, no. Brashing. No, no, no. Thrashing. There we go. Did you guys get triggered on that? Huh? I hope not. Okay. Here we go. Um, we got the, the famous Spyglass. Hey, you're about to see how famous this Spyglass is right here. We could have called Evolving Wilds. Man, darn it. Mm. You got me, opponent. You got my whirl. Hey, we're, we're creatures this game, buddy. For now. For now. <laughs> now he can still play um, Thrashing Brontodon, but he um, he can't activate it. So still a three four body that's going to try to beat us to death. Like that you you gotta you gotta consider that. Um, but if that is his only way of actually, he's got a, yeah, he's got the duress, so he's already used the duress, so we've seen Evolving Wilds, we've seen Forest and Duress, and now Thrashing Brontodon. Do I crack this now? I think I do. Let's do it before our draw. Let's go ahead and thin the deck, pull a little bit more, uh, land out. See if we can get, like, another combo piece or a whirl or anything. Uh, I guess another map. Um, it's not horrible. So, Glint Nest Crane. Uh, Prophetic Prism, that's pretty decent. And we'll just put these back in any order. Um, I really want to just cast the Prophetic Prism here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the better play might have been to Renegade Map, thin the deck, draw an extra card out of it, pull another land out of it, then Prophetic Prism, but if I end up drawing an extra land here, I'm okay with that. Um, can't kill it, so... This doesn't fly, does it? Oh no, why'd I do that? Oh, I thought it was flying. I, I forgot that Trophy Mage doesn't fly. What a, what a, 
a, a dummy. Dummy. Just traded that. Uh, Kilo, white chat. Oh, man. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, right, my, my clock, we're down to eight minutes, so... Yeah, definitely. So we've seen the benefactor, or he just tossed that. He just played Merfolk Branch Walker. He revealed a benefaction. He put that into the grave. We'll take three for now. Um. Okay, there's land. What does land mean? We can go... Cog worker. Map. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we may just end up like copying glint nest cranes. Like, would that be a thing? We take six here. Of course, we take six, right? I think we're going to be copying some glint nest cranes. I mean, at least we can copy and block. Lano, the elf of war. Okay. Um, it's going to be close. Yeah, I don't think we're copying Glint Nest Cranes at this point. If we can copy anything, we're going to do it at end of turn, make a Power Stone Shard. Um, but pretty sure we're just going to block some, some damage here. Uh, so... I don't know, how much damage can we stop next turn if we do? I don't know, if we keep it, we... So if we take six, we go to five... We Rivers Rebuke next turn. Blink of an eye the turn after that. I'm just going to blink this turn. So yeah, we're just going to blink uh, Thrashing Brontodon. I'll take the three. We get a whirl of invention. He may just replay it. I mean, he's got seven cards in hand. I know what two of them are, so yeah, he just replays it. Um, metallic rebuke. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's Rivers Review. I'm, I'm a little skeptical on like if I'm we're gonna be able to get there, but we get an extra scry since we Rivers Review. What? Swing, show him you ain't no punk, right? Um, I don't think we counter this. That I counter. I mean, he just now got his fourth land. Lint Nest is good here. Um, Prophetic Prism's not bad. We'll go any order. 
Um, now, here I'm going to use the Power Stone and and this. This way we can still were for three. Inventor's Fair. It's decent land. All right. Um, here we go. He may make us try to do it, so we are going to try to speed this up a little bit. We do get an extra Glint. Glint Nest Crane, so we've got an extra chump blocker here. Um, yeah, here we go. Alright, let's see what he plays. <clears throat> Mending? Alright, well... We're going to go ahead and we're for three. We're of invention. And we're going to get a power stone. He'll resolve his trigger. So I guess he gets like Land of War Elves back or something like that. Um, he puts Merfolk, Branch Walker, and a Memorial Folly in his graveyard. Um, we have Infinite next tur turn. Um, do we? We only have two Power Stones. Um, we can get an extra Power Stone right here. Alright, so we go land. I don't think there's any reason to not play the land. Sacrifice, um... Power Stone. Swing. Now we play this Power Stone. And... We have nine mana. I mean, he's got a ton of cards, like... We'll see what he does. Dusk Legion Zealot. Okay. Right, so... At the end of his turn here, we're going to... Uh, we're going to make another Power Stone, and then we're going to go infinite. So we've got five minutes to do this combo, guys. Yeah, we have, we have it. We At the beginning of the end step, we make another Power Stone, and it will stick around to the next turn. Yeah, that's fine. Don't misclick. Don't misclick. Um... Uh, there's nothing else I can do, so we're just going to pass. We go to cleanup. He has to discard some cards. We get a land. Um, we'll just go ahead and make the first one off of our, our land. We'll tap two. Uh, make one. Uh, we'll go to make another one. We will go to make another one. Sorry, chat. We will make another. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I've got to just keep going here. Oh, they say the number on them. That's cool. So, each one makes nine. 
got to get to 14. Uh, I think 14's like one of the, the the best ways to go about it. All right, so each one of them makes a ton here. So now we can start making copies of... Um, we can't copy Glintness Crane. I don't know why I didn't think about that. What's the auto pay? Let's just make sure that we have plenty here. We've got two minutes and 50 seconds. So... I want to make a few of these really quick. Um, so we've got 52 mana. We're going to make another. We've got... Uh, I'm going! Oh, choose that artifact. We want that artifact. Yeah, that's the one. We could be drawing cards. Like On paper, you would just establish your loop. And go, hey, look, I'm going to do this till I have 100 of these. So each one taps for 100. Um, and then you would just kind of like just go ham. All right, so let's make a couple more. I don't want to. I mean, we've got time here. Well, I mean, that's a weird combo. Yeah, Blista would have made this so much easier, right? Um, there we go. Do we have enough to kill him? I think. Um, I mean, he can block three, and we have well more than we need. We need seven to connect. No blocks. I mean, he he took it. Don't swing until five seconds on the clock. To send a message, right? Um. Wow. Wow. Um. The deck works, right? Like I was skeptical. The like like most of you guys, it worked. We got it to work. We even did it on MTGO twice. All right. Um. Let's try it again. Power shard combo. Wow. Just wow. No, this is actually one that uh, Dev put out last night. And um, and then Saffron Olive put out his version of it today. And apparently it's been all over Japan for a little while. Uh, or at least in um, you know in one tournament. Like, people are talking about it. Uh, but Saffron Olive did put out a version of this. All right. Um, I mean, we've got some power stones. We've got prophetic prism. I'll keep this. Well, let's see how this goes, shall we? Sure. That's a blocker. I will take that blocker. We might need to trophy mage for a cogwork symbol, but maybe not. Oh, Riddle... Okay, so the... All right. Um, this might be a little bit different. He might not be running a Braids. Maybe. Hmm. 
What do we have? Mirage Mirror, okay. That's a piece of the combo. And we'll pass. Now we can Mirage Mirror next turn. Um, okay, so he's got to opt. He's gonna, he's gonna activate his boys. Match two, game one, won the first one. We did, we did win the first one, right? Well, it's been fun, <laughs> right? The red deck. Uh, uh, hey, wizards, this deck, wizards might be able to beat this deck. I mean, we might get lucky and play, like, jank decks all night and have a chance. Wizards can kill you, like, turn five or six. So, I mean, like, you got to stop some damage. I mean, if he's got, like, Lightning Bolt or something like that, or Lightning Strike, then he needs to do it here. Otherwise, I'm just going to put this in front of it. We're just going to stop as much damage as possible. You actually made it in time. Warlock Lightning. Awesome, dude. Well, I'm glad you can make it. Where's MTG at, guys? Like, wasn't didn't he just get out of the hospital? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Somebody, I, I want to say somebody in the community that was j just got out of the hospital. Yeah. There's the Wizard's Lightning. Lightning Bolt, right? Oh, we went to the hospital. Okay. I hope he's okay. All right. Uh, trophy mage for a blocker. Get a power stone shard. Play power stone shard. Like this way we can start playing more spells next turn. Take our beats. Like, hmm. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. I miss mean, a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Right? Like, we're at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dev say this deck could go off on turn three, or turn four? Five? Turn five? Can it go off on turn five? Like, can we do it? Or do we have that hand? You know what? We don't even get to see turn five. That's my fault. Should have threw the trophy mage down. My bad. Um, yeah. Wow. Wizards. Wizards. Uh, blink of an eye is decent. I. Uh, you don't have activated ability. I mean, you could call the riddle form. There is an activated ability on riddle form that allows him to scry, but I don't think that that's what I'm really looking for. Um, I don't think there's any, anything I'm going to want this for. I think the Pacification Ray is actually just better here. Uh, Metallic Rebuke is probably not going to be that bad. I don't think he's going to have a ton of, uh, of cards or of, uh, of land and such. So uh, Metallic Rebuke may be pretty good here. Then I think I'm going to drop... I think I need to drop Whirl or the Bird. Yeah, let's drop the Bird. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to actually kill things. Like these one mana, like enchantments, they're or one mana artifacts. They're not bad. So, um, I mean, this wizard's deck is silly fast. It's just anything that has good interaction it can just rip it apart. So, uh, and most people play decks that have interaction. So, um, I mean, turn three we start rivers rebuking. Aren't we dead by then? Turn one, turn two, and yeah, we're just dead by then. Um, I mean, it's not a horrible hand, though. I've got to keep it, but I don't know. Like, we'll stop his turn three, so we stop Annalise. Mm. Don't think we're going to line up really well here. Oh, he didn't have a turn one. Woo, the crowd goes wild. Yeah. All right, not really, but whatever. Um, Fireweaver may be an X spell, right? Morphin Fireweaver. Uh, three steams in a row. Name change happening. Hap what? Not gonna happen. 
What? So you're no one then, aren't right? You're no one. You're not gonna or. or... Oh no! He got down a creature. That's gonna beat us to death. I'm gonna counter the next one, and then the next turn we'll be able to like power stone. He's getting in there. Okay. Nothing to counter here. That's okay. Um, this is going to be kind of risky, but... I mean, he just lets us have a Power Stone Shard, right? It's just a Power Stone Shard. Like, do you stop the rocks? Do you stop the stones? Do you got the stones? Hey, we got the Annalise. Hey. Told you that's what we were going to counter. I was expecting on three, but whatever. The opponent was, he was too scared to cast into it because we have four open mana or three open mana. So. Um, Trophy Mage. And yeah, we want um, Power Stone Shard. We want land. And pass. Pass the 10. Uh, the main reason that I didn't go ahead and play the Power Stone Shard right there was because, like, we can just hold up the Metallic Review. Um, I mean, yeah, he's probably got, like, some really cheap spells, but he could just have another Annalise. So, like, whatever. I mean, it's Mana Leak. Counter unless he pays three. He's got two. Woo. I'm surprised. The deck's fighting, all right? Like, let it be. It's fighting. It's trying. This deck's trying real hard. Um, now we can blink of an eye, draw a card. Like, blink of an eye might be, like, the most powerful card in here. Other than the combo itself. We get a whirl. Spell Weaver. Okay. I just want to draw a card anyway. Shrophy Maj? And we get to blink again? Like, we could just blink Trophy Mage and play that again, right? I I'm going to do it this way so I can leave up the double blue so that... I mean, we we're just going to, like, burn the one mana, or the one colorless mana this turn, but we get down, um, you know, our... We get to blink! We get to blink! What? Whatever. You just, you just, you do you. Um. All right. Well. I'm going to blink a trophy mage. Undo. Wait a minute. Let's cancel this. Let's look at this. So if we go one, two, three, play Trophy Mage, we still need to tra tap one of the one of these Power Stones. Get a Power Stone. Tap a Power Stone. Play a Power Stone. Tap a Power Stone, get a, play a land, play a Trophy Mage, or tap a land, play a Trophy Mage, 
use the ability, get the um, Cogwork Assembler. I don't want to play it, but I'm going to play it. And then I'm going to pass. So the plan here is for him to go to burn the Cockwork Assembler. And hopefully I can, in response... Yeah, I can now. He used his Blue Mountain. Right. I just bounce it and get him to use his burn. Like, we're there. I mean, like, if we just protect this, we're there. Alright, here we go. This is turn eight. This was turn eight. I mean, he afflicts me for four, but sure. So we stop the eight points of damage. I mean, I don't think it would have mattered. Like the only thing we're worried about is protecting this cock worker. So as long as cock worker doesn't die, we're good. Like these trophy mages there, that's not a problem. I like that cock worker's got a three powered body. I'm a three toughness body. We're holding protection for it. We're good. I think. Just as long as he doesn't play island. Soul Scar Mage, that's fine. Now we don't even have to protect it. Here we go, and we are off. There's got to be a way to like just auto mana. What do the commands say? Hold W auto mana? Okay. Alright, I like this. That didn't work. Um, so let's try having the mana before we click the ability. Nope. That didn't work. All right, let's just keep making them. Hey, he scooped. He scooped it up. There we go. Here we go. Whew. So now he knows what to destroy. Um, the gates are probably going to be pretty decent. Just putting things back in his hands probably not going to be that great. Um, we've already went over most of this. Uh, I think we just submit back. We, I mean, we kind of got a combo him out. Now I gotta try to get game three, right? Oh man, what a what a weird combo. It's like, what part of it do you destroy? Do you just wait and destroy the creature? Maybe. If I think you're gonna do that, though. Like, I was worried. Um, you guys think negate, like, just so that we can save it in the end. Um, all right. Ah, too late. I'd already submit. I would have made the change from Metallic Rebuke to Negate, but I think what saved us there was uh, countering Annalise. Like, I think Annalise would have just killed us. This is a bad hand. Uh, I mean, it's not a horrible, horrible hand, but... I mean, we do got pieces. We got a little bit of protection. 
we don't have the land. We don't have like ways of getting the land. This is gonna be bad. Ooh, I don't like like something about this hand. I don't like like it doesn't have the other things that I need to happen. I mean, we are on the draw though, so like. Ah. Um. Did we get a response about Crewfix? What was uh, what was the question about Crewfix? I haven't seen nor heard of Crewfix in a long time. Um, I don't know what happened to him, man. I, uh, I don't know. And people come and go. Um, I'm going to mulligan. Yeah, I am going. I'm going to mulligan it. It just didn't feel right. This doesn't feel a whole lot better, but it feels a little bit like a little bit better. The scry feels good when you're on the draw. So you would cut the words for negate that. Chandler, that would probably have been a really smart idea, but I didn't do it. Uh-oh. He had that turn one. Opponent. Yeah. I, I think I want all the land I can get right here. Um, we're definitely going to want to hit to like four or so. Like we can't stall on land. We just need to start assembling the combo ASAP. So... I don't think I want to put this down, but I do want to start drawing cards next turn, play the Trophy Mage, start getting in front of things. Mm, Alright, so we're going to be wearing. Alright, Lightning Strike. He's going for the he's going for the kill here. He's, he's going for it. He ain't playing around. Three cards in hand. Going to smack me for some more. Wow, just all of it right now. No blockers, nothing, just bam. I gotta put a blocker up here. Grab a power stone. Uh, <laughs> lightning strike. Straight to the dome. Wizard's Lightning, straight to the dome. We've got one blocker. It is over, ladies and gentlemen, on turn four with one blocker. It's still over. It's just over. You're dead, right? Wizards. Uh, the deck... We all say that Wizards, the deck is butt, but I don't, but, but is right, but, but what just happened? What just happened? Well, that escalated quickly, didn't it though? I hope you guys didn't blink. Game three is over. Um, let's jump into a, our next match here. Hope that we're not against Wizards. Yeah. Uh, call them Wizbutts. All right. I do not mean Wizards of the Coast. I mean the Wizards deck. Um, but uh, I, I like what Wizards of the Coast has got going on. Dominaria has been a really good block. Um, I like it. We won the dice roll. Yeah, this looks it looks doable. I mean, like anything else, it looks like, okay, hey, we, we got some scries. I don't know if I like were in the deck. We want another land. Draw one more blue. And we just keep playing, like... Yeah. Alright. Bowman Courier. We're dead. I called it. Turn one. I was the first one to say it. We're dead. Switch to Seth's deck. Well, then it wouldn't be a Deb's deck, man. It wouldn't be a Deb's deck. Um, I'm just going to scry some more. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want that. I want that. That's how I'm going to stay alive. We're going to bounce things. I want to wait till turn four so I can draw extra cards when I'm bouncing things. Uh, so hopefully next turn, like the trophy mage, will just put the brakes on old um, Bomac Courier here. But more likely than not, it's just going to cause us to get punched in the face with an unlicensed disintegration. Because that's what happens. That's magic. Just mechanized 
production. Right? Like, mechanized production seems like it would be just decent in the deck. Like, here, put that on the power stone. Let's go. Um, maybe. Ah. Are we getting somewhere? I mean, at least we can still blink of an eye here. I mean, I'm not worried about swinging. I'm worried about, like, gaining a foothold. Con? Well. Karn enters with five and ticks up to six, right? Like, he played Karn, then went into combat. Like, he didn't uptick Karn. He passed his priority after he... Yeah. So let's just time walk him there. Mm, I'll take the three. I mean, maybe I should have blocked, but I kind of doubt it. Um, now we can bounce and draw a card? Might sack the Renegade map first, just to thin the deck a little bit more. See if we can draw, like, another Power Stone, or, you know, a, a card that will help go get another Power Stone. Uh... Hey Thomas, how you doing? How is everyone finally catching a live stream? Been watching for a while though. Thanks Thomas, I appreciate that. There's that unlicensed disintegration. I'm bouncing my dude. I'm bouncing my own dude. I'm going to take the damage. I do not take the three damage from Unlicensed Disintegration, so taking four here, playing this next turn, getting another Power Stone Shard. Um, seems like it's going to be the better way to go. We'll see. We will see. Uh, yeah, alright. So, the play here is going to be uh, Trophy Mage first, then um, Prophetic Prism, or should I scry before I draw? Yeah, let's scry before we draw. We don't want another land, and so if we can avoid a land, we'll do that. Uh, so if we can put one at the bottom or something. Finding an actual uh, piece would be better, so, before the land. Yeah, oh yeah, playing this before the land, but I'm actually talking about, do we play the prophetic prism before the land? So, do we want to scry before we draw, or do we want to draw, then scry for the next draw? Um, yeah, I think that I want to actually scry first. An inventor's fair. Um, that's not horrible. So that means next turn that we can just play Inventor's Fair and go get yet another Power Stone. So Inventor's Fair is not bad here. I'm going to put it on the top of the library. I'm going to play a Power Stone. And then we're going to use these two to play the Prophetic Prism. So we just get like everything down, draw the Inventor's Fair, next turn play the Inventor's Fair, um, and go from there. So... Just got done watching the bourbon stream. It was a blast. Uh, glad you enjoyed there, Thomas. Glad you enjoyed. Uh, I try to keep those few and far between. 
but uh, eh, felt like a decent decent night for it. That's just soda. Yeah, it's not. That's that's nothing else. Just soda. Now I got soda on my beard or my mustache. It doesn't mix well with the wax, believe it or not. You'd think that it would be sticky enough that it would help hold your your stash, but. Just makes the wax run down your lips. Um, time to stop some damage. I mean, now it can be like, I'm going to sack the Bomac Courier, do the thing. Here comes the Karn again. He's making constructs. All right, well, Inventor's Fair, Power Stone Shard. Sacrifice, Inventor's Fair. So this will make two, three, four. Oh, we got one left. Okay, well, that works. This way we can just like power stone chart here. And then like just put down the entire combo. Like that's the plan. We're just going to drop the entire combo and say, "Okay, can you disrupt it? If not, we're going to try to kill you next turn." Um We're going to try. So we go Where's the power stone shards? Power Stone Shard. Um, tap Power Stone Shard. Play Power Stone Shard. Play Cogworker. We can't kill him next turn, can we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would actually make the first one. We would then have four. Um... So tap two, does that go off? There's an unlicensed disintegration and it's gonna be over folks. Karn is out on the front line and he is taking us down, down, down we go, red, black aggro. Ah, the vehicles. How's the deck? Um, we, we won our match, we won our first match. We, we've made the combo work. Um, now we're now we're showcasing just how good net decks really are. Um, that's going to be the game, guys. There's nothing we can do. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Which is how it's going to end. Just one kill spell. That was it. Just, hey, hey take another card. Yeah. Just, just put it in your hand. Don't even worry about down taking that card over there. Ooh, Goblin Chain Whirler. Got three open. Can't counter it. Right? Man. Got me. Insult to injury, but appreciate you showing me a little bit more of your deck. Like, we didn't know it was there, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, gotta go. Catch y'all later. Brandon, take care, man. Alright, so I'm going to scoop it up. You know, this deck does need time, so no point in waiting any longer. Hi, ay, 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 ay. Have we only played one other game with this? Is this just match two? No, we, we lost it. We, this, is, um, this is match three. Right? I probably should have sideboarded. Uh, this is a pretty good hand, I think. I mean... His duresses aren't going to be great. Fox, how did you get in here? Like, were you asleep in here the whole time? Really? Alright, you guys got to see the dog. You got to see the kid. Oh. Meat. <sighs> 
my furry friend. Oh, hey, buddy. Yes. Yeah. This is Fox. He's a monster. Um, just a huge uh, monster. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, buddy. All right, that's a little but that's a little much. That's a little much, sir. That's uh getting a little personal there. Anyway, yeah, this deck was cool. Uh, it was. It was cool. We got to see it go off. I think that that's like going to be the biggest highlight of the whole thing. Is like in the first match, we did get to get the deck to go off. We did get to go off uh, at least once against um, the uh, yeah. He's a big uh, Vanessa or Val ruined ruin this cat oh man he is just such a big baby so what do we do like power stone shard I mean he's got he's got to be able to blow all these up anyway so yeah it's no Ratsuko no it's no Ratsuko like Ratsuko's that was a, that was a cool deck Fox, let me let me showcase your monstrosity. Look at that, peoples. <laughs> All right, get your big butt down. Ah, uh, just sit there in the other chair. You're good, buddy. Oh, I got cat hairs everywhere. Ah, uh, stay back, man. Come on, come on. We've had him for about ten years now. Like. He is such an ingrained part of the family. We were talking about uh, today, like, man, we've had this cat for a long time. Like, yeah, we got him the year after we got together, so nine years. Uh, Layla will be eight, so yeah, he, he, we've had him for nine years, so. Yeah, the Ratsuko deck was great. Great deck. I, 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 I really enjoyed that deck. Yeah, the cat is massive. He's, uh, he's about 19 pounds, something like that. He's big enough that you can weigh him by just holding him in your arms, stepping on the scale. And then get off. Like, it's a noticeable difference. Dude, like, quit. When he wants pet, though, like, there's no, he, there's no taking no for an answer. Like, you're going to pet him. Um, I'm going to play some cards here. We're going to thin the deck a little bit. We're going to try to stay alive one more turn. Uh, Link, or not Link, but Fox. All right. Um, so I'm going to go. Sacrifice. I want to have these three islands. It's not going to work this turn, is it? No. Ooh, alright. We can possibly stave off a little bit of damage. Uh, with the blink of an eye here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll blink the Heart of Karen. It's not a bad play. He can't replay it this turn, so... Uh, we're gonna go blink with Kicker, Heart of Karen. Um, we get a Chalice. So that gains us one point of life. That's not, like... Horrible. This will gain us another. Um, that's not horrible either. This scry won't be bad. It'll tell us if we need to play the prophetic prism or go ahead and work. Um, countering the heart next turn, but I don't think we have time to do something like that. I think we. I, I think it's time to like go. So we need. Um, let's put that on the bottom. We will. Go ahead and Prophetic Prism. We get a Renegade map. Yeah, I played I played this this turn in Scribe, so um, can't play another land this turn. Do we live a turn? Uh. I mean, we can go one mana Renegade map. We have to were for 
the assembler. So we'll work for the assembler and try to eat like PNLR. So here we go. We're going to go were, tap, tap, and tap. So were for three. Done. And then. We'll take the Cogwork Assembler, move to blocks. I mean, he's probably got it like in a braid or something like that. He's been waiting to kill just this one creature. So, like stepping in front of this for the sh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we stop two and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. That puts us at one. I mean, if he's got shock, he's not shocking this. He's shocking our face. So. Yeah, I, I don't think we have a chance here. There's a heart of Kieran. Um. Uh, we would have to have like something just terrific. If we have one more turn, I think we could make it. I really do. I I do think that we could have made it with one more turn. Unfortunately, though, we're not going to get that turn. So, it'd be it'd be something like we would uh, Mirage Mirror. So, it'd be like one, two, three. Mirage Mirror. Mirage Mirror would copy the power stone like this is if we had enough life to live one more turn right now both power stones tap for two we would sacrifice the inventor's fair go get another power stone um, so we would do this this turn and if we could live the next turn we'd play power stone copy power stone have four power stones no we wouldn't have four power stones we just wouldn't have it period we're like three turns off. Um, yeah, he can crew it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't crew it. Like, if I copy it, then I, I don't even have three power to crew it. Yeah, you're right. I can't crew it. Um, like, our best bet would be to copy, like, uh, Inventor's Apprentice and and block and then, like, try to block somewhere else. But we, we lose in the air anyway, so it just doesn't matter. All right, guys. Well, uh Running white, uh, throw you some board wipes in there. Most of the time you don't care about what's on the board. You don't want anything on the board. Uh, so throw you some board wipes in there. If you don't want to run it in white, um, throw some red in there and uh, run uh, Hour of Devastation. Uh, you could run some um, some sort Sweltering Suns. One of the biggest cards you've got to add to this deck, guys, if you do play it, is uh, you guys have got to put Walking Ballista in this deck. I know you got a copy of Walking Ballista around. He's in every format. So everyone's got their copies of Walking Ballista. And if you don't, what are you doing? It's not like... It's like it might get reprinted from time to time, but... Get your walking ballistas. Anyway, um, walking ballista just belongs in the deck. It would definitely like speed things up, especially if you're playing on Magic Online. However, if you're, if you're playing in paper, it's going to be really easy to look at your opponent and go, okay, let's do some simple math here. And I am going to do this. You see how it's getting one more each time I do this? I'm going to make a hundred of these. So each one taps for a hundred. And then I'm going to tap all 100 of those and spend all of that mana into uh, to this. Now I'm just going to copy this 20 times and kill you. Like, it, it, like, like it's more than enough. Like, you see how this goes infinite? I'm just going to keep doing this until I have, like, 10 billion mana. And then, then I'll stop. 
You see how it's a loop? Okay, all right, we're going to continue doing that. Anyway, uh, once you create that loop, then you can look at your opponent and go, I'm going to spin seven of that, make a copy, make a copy, make a copy, make a copy. And uh, you make like 20, 30 copies and uh, swing. So, I mean, like, it's pretty cool. Go back and watch game one if you if you joined in late. Um, game one was really, or match one was really good. So, um, I hope you guys did have fun watching the deck. It was cool when we got it to go off. I was a little skeptical about if we would get it to go off or we would just die beforehand because of the aggro decks in the format. And that ended up being the case. But uh, against decks that didn't kill us by turn four or five, we actually got to see the combo. Um, the deck is really good about you know, like fishing up the parts to the combo, even though you're looking for you know four untapped copies of your of your um, power stone. And like the most devastating thing that can happen to you is someone to um, you know have two maybe three copies of a braid, and you're going to be in some serious trouble because they're going to be removing more power stones than you're going to be able to copy with your mirage mirror. Um, so. If there's no power stone at all to copy then you don't have a combo um, if this deck did become a thing I would expect that you know you're gonna want to run something like dispossess in the sideboard of white um, Ixalan's binding on a power stone would be really good if you could um, dispossess out the the copy spell then there are the uh, copier the, the the assembler then there's nothing I've got cat hair on my face and it is driving me insane um anyway like you could just call the assembler and, and be done with it um all right guys like the deck was cool i i had fun with it uh go back and check the um check match one match one was pretty good so thomas uh thank you for watching thank you for uh showing up you said uh this was your your first time catching live right so I um, hope you enjoyed the deck. Um, it is a $25 budget deck, and I think you could spend a little bit more money to the deck and uh, and beef it up a little bit, give it a little bit more of an edge. I don't know if it necessarily needs Whirl of Invention. Um, the um, Trophy Mages seem to be doing just fine. Like Trophy Mage is great. I do like the uh, blink of an eye in it. Like More than once, we actually ended up blinking our own Trophy Mage, and I think it was the right call to make it that time. Maybe blinking theirs, but I believe uh, to go for our combo is the way to go. So um, You did, and you're going back to check out game one. Well, awesome, awesome. Guys, um, take care. My name's Eric from Cyborg MTG. I had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun. Stick around for the credits, and we'll see you next time.